Hey guys, it's Broken and Angel, and today we're playing Mushroom Oasis. Uh, this is a visual novel, I haven't done one for a while, so I'm a little bit excited. Uh, so let's get started. Yeah, it does that when I click in and out of the game. My name, Angel. What's your cat's name? Um, what should we name our cat? Mm, go fluffy. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of at the moment. Fluffy has been missing for a while now. She was an indoor cat but had the tenacity of a wild cat on a mission trying to leave whenever the door was open. Catios and playtime just wasn't enough for little missus. I figured she'd come running if I left out some food by the porch. Three days later, still no cat. I've tried everything I can think of. Asking around the neighbourhood. Putting up missing cat posters. Sadly, nothing came from my efforts. I couldn't search for her during the day since I had work keeping me occupied. And there's only so many hours in an evening I could yell around the streets looking for her. There was only one place left I could think of that she might have run off to. The woods by my house, right across the street. I've definitely caught her eyeing the birds and squirrels that ran along alongside the perimeters from the front window, her teeth clicking in excitement. I was no outdoorsy person by any means. In fact, the thought of going in there scares me. But I had to find her, or at least try. The first weekend that came around I packed up some water, Fluffy's favourite treats and a compass to be safe. I wasn't sure where to even begin to look for her, so I started walking in a straight line, calling out her name every few steps. It certainly didn't take long for me to realise that I was way in over my head. Why did I think this was a good idea? It was hard to find my bearings within the surrounding trees. I didn't want to admit it, but I was lost. At least, not yet. I could only squint down at my compass as the needle spun slowly. Pretty sure they weren't made to do that. Did I really bring a busted compass on my first venture out in these woods? Figured that would just be my luck. The only thing risking my own safety was my own incompetence. I shook my head hastily. No, no, no. No time for negativity. Fluffy was out there somewhere, cold, lost and hungry. I had to keep going. It's been hours. I'm so, so lost. I don't even know why I keep searching even after the moment I'd realised that. Why did I think this was a good idea? Hunger had been gnawing at my stomach for a while now, having missed breakfast and lunch altogether. That's a norm for me. The heat and the humidity from the afternoon sun was unbearable, but the cooling air did nothing to soothe me. Even if I were to head home, I couldn't even pinpoint where that was. What do people even do in this situation? I knew it was baseless optimism, but walking onwards was really the only thing I could think of to do. Surely I'll come across something familiar. I trudged on, my shoes carefully avoiding the tree roots intertwined across the forest floor. But in my weakened state, Plus the approaching darkness, I found myself stumbling through the tough terrain. My feet hit something soft jutting out of the ground. Ugh. My hands shot out as I lost balance. My feet clumsily tried to find purchase as I wobbled backwards, arms flapping. Poof. <coughs> what? My shoe had landed smack dab in the middle of mushrooms the brunt of it causing a wispy cloud to erupt from the cluster. I stuck my nose in my elbow to avoid breathing it in. I couldn't differentiate one tree leaf from another for the life of me, but I'm pretty sure humans aren't supposed to inhale whatever the hell this was. It smelled strongly of rotten wood and wet dirt, even as it cleared. Something shiny quickly caught my attention. I stooped down to pick it up, gasping under my breath. It was Fluffy's collar, covered in whatever the hell those mushrooms released. I looked around desperately for any signs of her. Fluffy? Fluffy? Psst, 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 psst. 
Oh my god. I don't remember when I actually used to do that to get try and get cat's attention. I don't think people do that anymore though. I cough from inhaling some of the remaining dust floating in the air. I should really stick clear from this. Pocketing Fluffy's collar, I retreated carefully until I could breathe again. Stepping back, I could still smell it. It must have stuck to my hair and clothes. A quick once-over confirmed my suspicions with a slight cringe. A thin yet generous coating of it covered my sleeves and jeans. I leaned against the tree dusting off my clothes in a naive attempt to get the dust and the smell out to no avail. If anything, it felt like I'm breathing more of it in. What used to be musty now turned sweet and I found myself inhaling even deeper trying to pinpoint the smell. Cucumbers? It smelled like fresh cucumbers. A tingly feeling crept up my hands and neck, pinpricks spreading across my limbs as a strange heat reached my face. I started to feel drunk and woozy. My senses were numb. It should freak me out. And yet, a strange comfort washed over me. I should lie down. Right now, in fact. My legs gave out from underneath me, my body toppling over at an awkward angle. I laid there. And stared. And stared. And stared. It was nice here. A peaceful calm. The perfect place for a nap, even. My eyes grew heavy as I swam in and out of consciousness. Yeah, a nap sounds really good about now. Oh no. This, I'm sorry this happened to you, little guy. By the will of the forest, you may rest in peace. Hmm? Wait, a human? How'd you end up all the way out here? Still breathing, too. Ah, oh, jeez, I can't leave you here. What should I do? I woke with a jolt. It was warm, but comfortably so. I could feel the weight of a blanket on me as I tried to sit up. I couldn't. I couldn't move my body. My fingers twitched uselessly at my sides as my eyes darted around in panic. Glancing about, I could see the interior of a cabin, or at least the ceiling of one. I couldn't see much past the corner of my eyes. Where was I? How did I get here? A desperate feeling rose in my chest. I had to leave. Right now. This was wrong, wrong, wrong. I wasn't meant to be here. I could hear the crackling of the fire nearby, likely the source of warmth I had felt on waking up. I could also hear footsteps approaching. Uh, pretend to be asleep? <laughs> I mean, that's probably what I would do. Uh, let's stay awake. I flattered my eyelids, straining to look at the person approaching. My eyes wind widened as I took in their appearance, protrusions from their forehead catching my attention. Not to mention the green skin. The stranger didn't sense my unease as they heaved a sigh of relief. You're awake. That's good. Very, very good. How are you feeling? I blinked. Oh. So sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. The person held a cup to my lips, a strong sweet smell coming from the rim. A gentle hand grabbed my chin to open my mouth. I couldn't even move to resist. Don't worry, it'll help you feel better, I promise. Drink up. As the liquid hit my tongue, all I could feel was a vague sense of heat. As I kept drinking, taste and texture returned. The sweetness of berries and chamomile coating my taste buds, I could even detect a hint of mint. I lifted my head finally, hands fisting at my sides as I propped myself into my elbows. The person kept a steady hand on my chin, careful not to pour in too much in case I choked. I finished every last drop, wiping my mouth with the back of my hand. I stared at my fingers, realising I had full anatomy over my body again. Good as new. Now, how are you feeling? Feel better, thank you. The stranger laughed. 
Oh, I like the way you sound. Been ages since I've talked to anyone, much less with a voice as nice as yours. I brushed off this strange compliment, finally looking around the cabin properly. It was a simple room filled with sparse wooden furniture, perfect for someone living alone. An open archway to the right led to what I assumed was the kitchen. Across from it, a door was closed shut. Possibly the bathroom? Taking it in, there was a common theme of knitted decoration strewn around. Any available surface had patterned knitted tablecloths covering it. From what I could peek into the kitchen, the same could be said for the kitchen utensils. An unfinished project laid beside the bedside table where I sat. A pair of knitting needles just jutting out of a pile of yarn from a small basket. As far as I could tell, it looked like the beginnings of a green scarf. The stranger was comfortable in staying silent, observing me as I looked around. Though, with their hat off, the horns and ears were impossible to ignore. They tossed their hat onto the bed, scruffing their hair and making it even messier. Sorry, but who... What are you? Hmm? Oh, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Hiya, I'm Michael, with a Y. I shook my head. No, no, I meant that, um... Michael stared at me, their left ear twitching. You look very... He snorted. Ugly? Off-putting? <laughs> no, just different. Different, huh? You're just being nice. Well, then explain yourself. Um, I mean, that's kind of rude, isn't it? I print, uh, pinched the bridge of my nose, exhaling, exhaling slowly. Um, just... Sorry, it's been a long day is all. I should be thanking you. If it, if it helps, it's, a uh, skin condition? Is that what you humans call them? <laughs> the way he said it didn't sound confident. And the ears? Um... Genetics? <laughs> right. And I assume the little... I wave vaguely at his horns. Antennae? Those things are just cosplay to complete the look. Would that make a convincing argument? I squinted. Maybe? <laughs> but yeah, it's cosplay. Still doesn't explain everything. Michael huffed a nervous laugh. Listen, I'm just a guy living by himself in the woods. You don't need to worry yourself further than that, okay? Something in his tone compelled you not to question his existence anymore. He's just some guy living in the woods. Completely normal. Right, completely normal. <laughs> I'm Angel. Michael Beams. Nice to meet you, Angel. I fiddled with the blankets as Michael scooted closer from the edge of the bed. I know I already asked, but how are you feeling? Any aches, sores, nausea? Intrusive thoughts, weird impulses, fever, maybe? Uh, I don't think so. He placed his hand on my forehead before I could react. His hands were calloused, quickly retracting as he gave a thoughtful hum. You seem to be lucid. That's a good sign. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> I was about to comment on his strange features then they re when they reminded me of my cats. My cat! Oh, shoot. So sorry if this is out of nowhere, but have you seen a cat around these parts? Her name's Fluffy. She's a sweet little thing, about this big. Skittish, but she can approach strangers if she needs to. I pulled out my phone to show pictures of her, only to find it missing from my back pocket. Wait, where is... I haven't. Huh? You're Fluffy, I haven't seen it. Oh, I see. I slumped against the pillows, rubbing at my temples. She lost her collar too. Even if anyone finds her, they wouldn't be able to tell where she's from. Damn it. 
Michael stayed quiet, watching me from his side of the bed. <clears throat> you care a lot for your fluffy. My cat? Of course. To the point where you're willing to run yourself ragged this deep in the forest for a cat. Do you realize how far you've wandered away from the nearest town? I found you near unconscious, in an area nobody's set foot in for years. My cheeks grew heated at how stupid reckless that sounds. I mean, anyone would, for something they care about, right? Michael eased up, shoulders relaxing. He rubs his chin in a moment, as if con contemplating something serious. Something they care about, huh? He finally tipped his head at me with a smile. It's cool to see someone willing to go this far for a small critter. Not a lot of people come out this far, not even searching for their lost cats. It's been a while since I've talked to someone, so the conversation's nice too. I think I'm starting to like you, Angel. Mmm, thanks. <laughs> His smile widened, but something about it was off. He was showing too much teeth, and it felt stiff. I rubbed my neck trying to think of something else to say. Uh, can I ask, how did I get here? Oh, like I said, I found you in the woods not far from here. Oh jeez, really? I knew I was tired, but I couldn't have possibly... Huh? I did step in something, something important? Familiar pinpricks crept up my skin. Home. I need to go home. Michael stiffened at his, as he grabbed my shoulder. Uh, never mind that. You'd fallen unconscious from heat stroke. Heat stroke? No, that wasn't what happened. I wasn't. I was fine up until. Michael shook his head insistently, leaning close. No, no, no. Firefly, you weren't fine at all. If I hadn't found you when I did, well, who knows what could have happened. There's dangerous wild animals in these woods, bears for example. They could have snapped you right up. Bears. No, he was right. You've always heard news of bear sightings around the neighbourhood. Not to mention many warning signs you'd see by the roadside of your expedition in search of your cat. <clears throat> And to go in the woods without bringing any water? Passing out from heat stroke of all things. How could you be so stupid? I shook my head, brain too foggy to pick apart my thoughts. He sounded confident, so why should you doubt him? Well, if it means anything, I'm glad you were there. Michael relaxed, hand on his lap once more. He grinned at me. So am I, Angel. I'm definitely glad I found you. His eyes were hidden fully behind his uncurly hair. Oh, uncurly. Unruly. But I couldn't help feeling how intensely they were fixated onto me as he said that. The hairs on the back of my neck stood. Uh, sure. Without a distraction, I've only just realised how uncomfortable I was sitting still. The blanket on me was starting to itch, just as desperate need to get home began to rise in me again. Um, this was nice, but I should really be getting, get going now. Wait. My host jumped up from the bed before I could. I mean, you can't. I can't just let you wander around the woods this late. Please, stay a little bit longer. Why did that skip? Hold on. <laughs> okay, I see now. But Michael, I really have to... Come. He grabbed my hand and led me across the room. We stepped into the kitchen, a fragrant smell of cooked potatoes and meat hanging in the air. Two plates had been set out on a small circular table, complete with utensils and mugs of tea. I wasn't expecting guests today, so the food is nothing fancy, but... Join me for dinner? He looks so hopeful, ears drooping. You'd feel so bad if you had to say no. Oof. 
I mean... Do I be realistic or do I be chaotic? Michael's jaw dropped for a second before he quickly recovered. I... Yes, yes, of course, here, come sit. I'll serve up the cottage pie in a minute. I sat as instructed, my stomach rumbling something fierce as the smell was the only thing I could focus on. Yes, this was definitely the right choice. What was so important that you had to leave so soon? The outside world can wait. Well... There's the issue of my cat being missing. <clears throat> and the fact that this dude could kill me. But okay. You could stay here. And enjoy my company. Oh? Actually. I should ask, are you okay with meat for dinner? I could make something else for you if that's not your preference. I'm okay with meat. <clears throat> oh, Okay. You'll be having the same dinner as me then. Michael patted about the small kitchen with an almost giddy excitement. He put on a pair of knitted oven mitts, humming as he stood, stooped down and pulled out a steaming tray of pie from the wood stove. The smell. It filled the kitchen in an instant as he brought it into the table. My stomach rumbling louder in response. I'm pretty sure Michael could hear it, but he just smiled as he served up our portions. <clears throat> he discreetly cut me a bigger piece, which I was grateful for. It looked so good. The crust was a nice golden colour, streaked with crisp limes and garnish. The meat and the veggie filling looked absolutely delectable, the savoury sauce leaking into the plate. My mouth was watering, unsurprising, considering the fact I haven't eaten all day. Careful now, it's still hot. It was fair advice, but I didn't wait more than two blows before biting into my first forkful. Ah, oh. it was definitely way too hot to eat straight from the oven. Michael kept a polite expression, the corner of his mouth lifting as I panted with the piece still in my mouth. He gave me a few seconds to recover, elbow planted on the table. Is it good? I nodded vigorously, even though my buds were burning. Mm-hmm. Mm. I couldn't taste anything. He laughed. It's usually better on the second bite. I slowed down, hand on my mouth as Michael poked his fork into his own slice. I tentatively blew on the pie to make sure it was cool before taking another bite. He was right. The second bite was a lot better. The seasoned potato crust was nice and crisp on top, cheesy and creamy in the middle. The savoury meat filling was well cooked and bursting with flavour. Every bite felt like home. My host watched me enjoy the meal from across the table. Do you like it? Yeah, this tastes amazing, Michael. He flushed from the compliment rubbing the back of his neck. <laughs> I'm glad. I like to think of myself as a decent cook, but I've never been able to get anyone else's opinion on that. Do you like baking in particular? Mm, not always. I usually go for simple dishes with any ingredients available. I nodded amicably. They didn't say much else. I was more focused on scarfing down dinner, which thankfully Michael didn't seem to mind. The overall atmosphere was nice and homely and I could hear Michael tapping his feet from underneath the table. I guess he was that happy to have someone stay for dinner. It did seem like he lived alone judging from the surroundings of his cabin. <clears throat> so, he perked up instantly, his focus solely on me. Um, what made you want to live all the way out here? The place seems very isolated. Oh, well... When you look like me, it's kind of easier to just live out of sight from everyone else. A pang of guilt shot through my chest. I was giving him a hard time about how he looked too. <laughs> he must have sensed it clear as day on my face. Not that you're one of them. You've actually been nicer than most. Though I wonder if... His smile turned strained. Never mind. My point is, it's better here than anywhere else. 
Why don't you try the tea, Firefly? He seemed uncomfortable now, easing into a different topic. It's probably best to follow along. Oh, sure. I reached out towards my mug, only to push it off the edge with my clumsy fingers. Wait! I bent over the table to grab it, fully expecting it to fall out of reach and land on the floor into broken pieces. It never did. Instead, a long green appendage was twisted around the ceramic mug, securely keeping it in place. Not a drop had fallen out. Oof, okay. <laughs> Is that his tail? My eyes trailed along the length of it until I pinpointed that it came from behind Michael, the rest of it partially hidden beneath his cardigan. Michael? Is that... yours? I... Michael buried his face in his hands, the strange appendage from before lowering to his side, mug and toe. I'm sorry, Angel. I think... I think it's time I was honest. He lifted his head, fingers carding his hair back to reveal his eyes. I froze as two, no, multiple pairs of irises stared right into mine before darting to the side and avoiding my gaze. I know it's a lot to take in, but this is the real me. Please, please don't be scared. <coughs> Do we freak out or remain calm? <clears throat> oh, I feel sorry for him, but I don't know if he's like a murderer. You know, I'd probably get myself killed in real life. <laughs> Surprise, I'm still alive. Remain calm. My grip on the kitchen utensils tightened. He looked freaky, yes. It felt unsettling every time he blinked those eyes in succession, even when he wasn't looking at me. But he also looks sad. I... I swallowed thickly. I'm not scared. Michael's many pupils blew wide, dilating like an excited wildcat. It sent a shiver up my spine. Oh, okay. Maybe just a little bit scared. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. He hastily grabbed an empty plate and hid behind it. <clears throat> Shoulders scrunched up despite his stature. Would it help if I just hide? Uh, I could fix my hair like before, if that's what you prefer. His voice was muffled behind the ceramic barrier between us. It was kind of endearing. I slowly reached out to touch his hand, the slight brush of my fingertips making him jump in place. Michael? Yeah? Can you put that down? He slowly lowered the plate. <clears throat> His eyes were still darted to the side, avoiding me. Can you look at me? <laughs> oh. Don't, don't look at me like that. Sorry, I just, I got caught up in your eyes. This was so awkward. His hands were shaking. I looked down at the mug still floating next to him, hanging on for dear life. I reached over and plucked it straight out of his grasp. I tentatively took a sip, noticing how Michael was watching over the rim of the mug. The taste was mildly spicy with an almost earthy bite to it. I recognised it instantly as ginger tea. It's almost room temperature, but it's still pretty good. Huh? You wanted me to try the tea, right? I like it. Thank you. Oh, oh, I'm glad. Michael relaxed back into his seat following my lead as I picked up my fork once more. The silence didn't last long as Michael fidgeted. Uh, are you really okay with this? With me? I gave him a once over, really taking in his features. His skin. His horns. His tail. His eyes. It's... Very different than what I'm used to, but I think I can learn to like it. Is that weird to say? I mean, you're not bad to look at. It's actually kind of, um... Damn it, damn it, damn it, what do I say? 
Attractive, unique, hot. <coughs> hmm. Let's go with... I would say unique, but I don't know if that's going to offend him. Attractive. You think I'm attractive? Yeah. Oh. My point is, your appearance shouldn't matter. You've been nothing but kind to me so far. I'd be the worst kind of person to judge, some, judge someone based on how they look. I haven't known you that long, but you seem like a good person. You're fine, Michael. I smiled at him. We're fine. Michael's face had darkened into a deeper azure shade by the time I was done talking to him. I... I see. He fidgeted some more before nodding and smiling a bit. Well, thanks, Angel. I'll cherish this moment forever. He beamed at me as he enthusiastically went back to eating his food. That was... something. We continued with a bit of small talk, mostly stories about Fluffy or snippets from my personal life. Michael hung on to every word I said, not bothering to elaborate much about himself despite my burning curiosity. I could tell he was extremely insecure about his appearance, so it was probably best I keep my questions to myself for tonight. We cleared up the kitchen in relative silence, Michael storing away the rest of the pie as I washed the dishes by the sink. Being out here in this remote cabin, I wondered how he had running water. Maybe I'll ask him later. So, thanks for dinner. No problem. Oh, and please, take the bed for the night. But, but, but. Ah, you're my guest and I'm the host. Take the bed, okay? Thanks, Michael. I'll leave first thing in the morning. Michael got quiet, staring at the floorboards. With his hair out of the way, I could finally read his expressions. He did seem upset. Is that okay? I'd need your help, obviously, but I have to get going at some point. His tail flickered behind him. Yeah, I'll bring you home tomorrow morning. I heaved a sigh of relief. Thanks, Michael. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Um, good night, Angel. Good night, Michael. He seemed really happy being able to say that. I plopped myself down onto Michael's bed, getting comfy beneath the blanket. Michael was gathering some blankets of his own to make a makeshift bed on the floor in front of the fire. He had an impressive collection of knitted items, a comfortable nest forming in the centre of the room. My eyes trailed off after his tail, now out in the open as it flicked and swayed. Kinda like a cat. I miss Fluffy. Now with a full stomach, dozing off came easy. I didn't even realise how tired I was. I listened to the gentle crackling of the fire, my vision darkening. Good night, Angel. That's the end of day one from Mushroom Oasis. Demo! Okay, tell me what you think of the game. Any support feedback is highly appreciated. As nearly everything is done by me, save, save sound and music. Future updates will be a while. I'll try and update as often as I can via devlogs on the Games It's Year page. Thank you for playing. I really love visual novels. <laughs> especially quirky ones like this um i'm really looking forward to the rest of this game if it's anything like um the other ones that i've played uh the best one so far that i've played is a date with a serial killer if you haven't seen that already please do go and check that out um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in another video Thank you. Bye.